So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Top Talk guest photographer session. Hi, John. I know I've got you in the wings. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks. Excellent. John, like I said, I, I got to chat with you yesterday, so and we, we discussed a little bit at length of what we're going to be talking about tonight, but I'm very, very excited to have you with us. So it's a very sort of, um, well, I think unique approach and sort of uh, where you've adapted sort of your background uh, in sports science into photography. So I'm not going to share any more because I know it's part of your presentation, uh, but we do want people to interact with you, uh, John, and I know these are just some of the links yeah. that they yeah. can interact with you uh, using. I'm going to share all of those via the chat panel. Um, so guys, just please, any questions you have for John, I just send them through the question panel. Like I said, we've applied plenty of time, and if relevant, I will chip in and just ask John to cover something again. So John, if you're happy, I will hand you the screen, because I know uh, we've got a, a great presentation to, to share yeah, with them. Great. So it's coming over to you now, and I'll let you know when we can mm -hmm. see it clearly. Okay, let me see here, show my screen. Brilliant. So I can see it in uh, slide format in a minute. So there we go. Full screen. I can hear you loud and clear. So one last time, yep. guys, any questions that you have for John, please share them to me via the question panel and I'll interrupt or use them in the question time at the end. John, it's all yours, pal. Hi, thanks. And thanks for having me. So uh, my name is John Hellstrom and I'm a wedding photographer. Um, I have a background uh, in sports science. But first, I would like to uh, share a quote that I really enjoy. Let me see if I can make this work here. Here, I don't focus on being the best. I just focus on being better than last week from Jerry Kionis. I think that captures a lot. Um, not, not comparing yourself in a negative way to others, trying to self-improve, to monitor, monitor how you are doing and how you improve. And when I was really small, my mother put me in judo, so uh, she wanted me to be able to defend myself and I've practiced martial arts for a long time. And uh, the do in judo or karate do, that means the way in Japanese. Uh, it could be photography do, the way of photography. It's about how you how you improve yourself, how you getting immersed into photography, and really enjoying it. Um, my story. I put my, my contact info here as well for you. And uh, I am a golf coach, or I worked as a golf coach, professional golf coach, and I started photographer for about 25 years ago as an amateur. Uh, when I did my coaching, golf coaching, I wanted to know the facts behind coaching. I actually attended a, a, a scientific congress in St. Andrews, 1994, and I learned so much about trying to get information, true information of uh, how people improve. So instead of just being a follower, trying to see who was the best players and who, who, who the coach to the best player was, uh, I wanted to do mini investigations to improve my coaching. So that was my, my start into research, but, but uh, in 1994 I didn't have a, uh, even have the, the high school education, so I had to start from bottom. Uh, I'm from Stockholm, Sweden, so excuse me for my swinglish, if you don't understand it, you, you, have, to, you have to ask in the chat window. Um, so I do research in sports science and most of it is aimed toward golf. Uh, I support Swedish Golf Federation with research and development and I also make the national need profile in golf. And I'm going to talk a little bit what the need profile is. Uh, a little bit later. Uh, I've written several books, training books, uh, especially in, in uh, aimed toward golf or expert performance in golf. And I've also photographed, I think, about eight sports books. And I think I got the question uh, because I had the biomechanical understanding uh, of sports. So I could not only photograph it, but, but I also understand the movement so we could discuss with the coaches. 
I became a pro photographer around 2012 and entered my first competition in 2013. And I entered the print competition in 2014 and I scored, I think I scored 180 and the other two out of three, other two was sub 80. And uh, I remember that I, I, I glued the, the, the mats myself and uh, I really hope that he wasn't going to lose during the competition. But I got the bug uh, and previously the, uh, the practice I did uh, for the past 25 years, it wasn't really deliberate. Uh, I did enjoy photography but it wasn't until I, I started to dip my toes into pro professional photography that I understand that I, I really needed to, to train smarter. And since I have a background in, in expert performance, but in a completely different area, I, I've been thinking more and more about how it would look in if, if I did it in, in uh, photography. Uh, the next year, uh, I sent in uh, eight prints to um, SWPP and WPPI, and I got, I think I got seven awards out of eight, and two 90-point prints there, and that was my personal records. But then again, uh, it's, it's not about comparing me uh, to, to, to others. I, I, it's, it has always been comparing me to myself and, and enjoyed the journey. So it goes up and down. Uh, let me see here. Uh, you have my contact information there, yeah. Uh, so, an Olympic need profile, what is that? So I'm doing this work or profile for the Swedish Golf Federation to uh, support coaches in their work with the players toward the Olympics and other, uh, other areas. And it's basically seven points. The first one is a description of the sport. The second one is a, a description of the key factors for success. The third one would be an international analysis of the competition, what, what, what the best players in the world, or it could be photographers if we would do it in, in photography, uh, how they perform. Then number four, it's a national an analysis, how the country compares to the world. Uh, and the fifth point would be future development, prognosis and possibilities. The sixth thing would be follow-up programs, test and evaluation, and this is on a national scale. And number seven, tools for planning documentation uh, of the training, so we can follow up all the data. So that's basically the seven areas of a need profile. Uh, one of the most important things, obviously, is to be able to practice, to do the things you do, you, you want to improve a lot. And in a classical uh, research by uh, Anders Ericsson from 1996, uh, he measured a 20-year-old pianist skills levels and how much they trained. And you can see that, 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 that there was a huge difference in skill levels uh, and training hours here. So, what he came up with was a very rough estimation that to be an expert you need roughly 10,000 hours or 10 years of practice. Uh, that can depend. Uh, we, we know now that it's a very, very rough estimation. If it's an immature sport or a very, very talented or, or promising uh, player or athlete, they can perhaps reach uh, uh, expert level uh, in fewer hours than that. But then again, it takes sometimes double that amount to be established as a top athlete. So you can reach uh, a, a, an international level, but to be among the top of the top, it's even more practice. Uh, if we would break it down, these 10,000 hours and we would increase the volume per year. Uh, you can see on the x-axis we have age, 9 to 19 or 20 years old, uh, and on the y-axis we have um, hours per year in, on the left side and hours per week on the right side. You can see that it, it's a lot 
of training hours and you need to increase it over the years gradually. And if we would approach photography as an athlete uh, sport or an Olympic sport, we would be training a lot now, nowadays in, in at a young age. Uh, and some countries like China, they perhaps would take away their, their photographers uh, in a very young age and put them in special schools for photography uh, to prepare them for, for the Olympics. But it's more than training volume. Uh, if we look at the training processes first, if you train too little, you become undertrained. You get worse if you train. It's easy to think about, for example, strength training. Uh, if you do maintenance training, then you are equally str strong over time. If you do a positive overtraining or or what we call optimal training, then you will uh, improve over time. You get stronger or you'll get better uh, on, on what you're training on. And then we have negative overtraining and a few people that are really motivated comes into that category. And they train too much and they don't have time to recover. So the training progress usually is, is uh, it's a breaking down process. You break down the muscles when you strength train, but when you eat, sleep, uh, and rest, uh, the body rebuilds and it super compensates so you get even better. Then, then it's the, the positive overtraining. But if you train too much, you will not recover or super compensate. You will get worse because you, you never um, let the body recover. And uh, it, it's, it's seems like it's similar processes in other areas like like art and music and it's it's possible that it could be like that in 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 uh, photography as well if you do it if you work too much or if you try to improve too much uh, without rest uh, you can become worse also performance versus learning so performance is actually what you do and you can also, you can see it, and you can sometimes measure it. It's perhaps what you do when when the bride comes into this church, where you place yourself, uh, where you aim, um, how you shoot. Learning, on the other hand, is um, the change in capability to perform a skill, how you improve or get worse in in the photography. Um, so that's the difference between performance and learning. So basically, you get worse, you stay the same, or you get better. But when looking at getting better, you can get better in different ways. So looking at this performance train, you can see top uh, left, you can see a liner improvement, where you get over time better and better in a, in a steady pace. Uh, in bottom left, you can see a positively accelerated learning curve. When you don't see an improvement in the beginning, or very small improvement, and then a very accelerated improvement curve. Top right, you can see the negatively accelerated curve, and this uh, this is a frequent uh, uh, this is a frequent way of improving, uh, which also uh, which also uh, is is very very common for for better players, athletes, or perhaps photographers. Uh, if I run 100 meters on 16 seconds, it's fairly easy for me to train and improve that with a second. So you can see a rapid improvement. But if I run 100 meters at 10 seconds, you won't see me uh, improving that with a second. So. It's also about how much left there are to improve. So that is why you can see a performance uh, a decrement over time. So for photographers that are much better than me, it might be harder to improve their photography. So the smaller 
improvements uh, will co cost more or, or take more effort in training. That's normal. Then we can see the, the S-shaped curve and, and you don't see an improvement in the beginning. You can see it's steep and, and then it flattens out. So these are theoretical improvement curves that, that are Life is not that smooth. Uh, life is usually a little bit, you know, erratic. And but if you smooth the curves out and see it over time, these are the the, the main improvement curves. And uh, when looking at improvements and arrested development, uh, in many sports or most sports, we can see that the amateurs that are practicing or, or doing their sports, for example golfers, they can play a lot of golf, but somehow their improvement rate is not that steep as those on the professional tours uh, were in the beginning. And the plateau is lower, so the top level is, is much lower than the uh, than the pro than the pros and the best best uh, athletes, uh, and it can be like that even though that they have practiced uh, a lot, both of them. And what we've seen through research is that the best players they are resistant to automaticity. Uh, they they do perform automatically when in competition because that makes them perform in short term as good as they can. However, they, they really push themselves, challenge themselves and try to improve uh, between the key uh, tournaments. So the saying goes that uh, in, in ice skating, uh, the best ice skaters are those you see fall the most on practice. It's because they're pushing themselves and trying to improve. So it's a, it's a delicate balance between uh, having the automatic automaticity, which makes you uh, focus on, on the task at hand instead of uh, thinking manually, uh, versus challenge yourself. Uh, in photography, that could be, for example, buying a new equipment. Uh, you have to challenge yourself. You have to learn yourself uh, where the new buttons are, how how it uh, how it uh, works. A new flash. Perhaps you want to improve lighting technique. You want to do it in a stressful uh, environment. Perhaps you want to uh, try some communication techniques to to affect the the the. Uh, wedding clients emotional state uh, so all those new things that you think can improve yourself in your work that will be a challenge for you to do but it can improve yourself uh, over the long run so it's not only about the volume or how much you practice it's also about how you practice and in a research by Ericsson, Kramp and Tess Römer from 1993, it was classic research. Uh, they found that uh, the, the best ones, they were actually training with specifically made, designed uh, uh, training programs. And the training programs had high relevance to the task. I mean, you can have a, a very, very detailed training program, but if it's not relevant to photography, you want to improve your photography. And it took a significant effort, and it required full concentration for them. So that's really important. If it doesn't take any, any effort from your side, you probably won't improve. And it's also not, uh, not necessarily enjoyable. So we have to differ uh, between uh, coaching kids, where we want them to enjoy, uh, and, and those who are aiming for an elite level in sport. It's, it's, 
perhaps not fun to to enter the pool and and swim a, a thousand meters at six o'clock in the morning. Do it a second time at lunch and doing doing it uh, at at the evening a third time. They're probably not always laughing at that, but in the long run, it's enjoyable because they have goals, they have purpose that they are burning uh, for, that they really, really want to achieve. So, three things with another word is that you need valid goals or, or clear purpose with your training or in photography. And uh, here it's really important for us to know what is what is a good photography of photographs or print and what's a bad one what's the difference and here it's always valuable to get get support or coaching from better photographers and uh, we also need quality feedback so when i know what to do then I also need to compare it to what I actually did to see the difference. And I need much training to do this. So I have a clear goal, a clear purpose, and I have quality feedback that's, that is actionable. And I do it over and over again. And some athletes, or perhaps photographers, have clear goals or purpose, but they don't have feedback. Well, they don't have good feedback. Uh, so then it doesn't matter if they practice a lot. They, they, they won't uh, improve as much, especially if they are quite good. Then, then, they need, then it's even more important to have quality feedback. So uh, looking at quality training in general, and uh, the American Society for Quality compared Olympic training and business methods and they mention the following things we absolutely need to learn from prior experiences so this is one of the th th things that that makes me think that that entering competitions uh, it's really really valuable if the judges uh, are giving uh, good quality feedback uh, that we have structured goal setting, so we know uh, these goals and, and they are clear to us, so we know exactly what we're doing and when we're going to achieve them. That we have data-based decision making and planning, so we don't go just in random and do stuff, but we have actually data on it. Also that we have actionable measurements tied to those goals. We can compare it over time. Benchmarking the competition, so we can know what 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 it what is required to to uh, earn more money in business or or be able to score high points and be more competitive. And also coordination of resources in a team-based approach in business in photography. That might be to outsource some things that you, 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 you need to do. Perhaps it's, it's about editing, uh, perhaps it's about uh, the economy, perhaps it's about uh, uh, printing or, or album making, but it's a team. You, you can be stronger by having a, a high quality team around you uh, delegating the things that are your weak links. So in, in golf in Sweden, uh, I actually created what we call the loop. And uh, when I studied at the University of Sports in Stockholm, um, we had these five steps of training. And in golf at that time, fitness training wasn't that popular. But in other sports, it was really, uh, they really had a methodological process about it. So my aim was to, to not only train in random, but, but to have some thoughts about it. And these five steps would be first to make and analyze and set goals. 
when you have those goals, you make a plan to reach those goals. On the third step, you execute the plan, or perhaps you don't execute the plan. You monitor the results, and on the fifth step, you evaluate and reconnect. And what I usually recommend coaches to do, and players, and photographers, uh, would be to one time per week think about uh, your goals, uh, your plans, and what you did good last week, what the key things are to improve regarding, uh, for, for the next week, and how. Just to reconnect, for me it's, it's every Sunday when I think about what I did last week and I think in front um, uh, for the next week. Then we can have a larger evalu evaluation and reconnection uh, one time each month where you can connect to your team or, or your, your associates and, and those who work in, in, uh, together with you. So uh, let's take a look at the first step here, analyze and set goals. Uh, in sports, we do need and gap profiles, and I'm going to talk soon about what that is. We identify key parts to be able to perform as good as possible. We try to measure it to make it clear and to compare to, to, to that level where I want to compare uh, to, to compete on. And if I see a large gap, I'm much worse in one area than another area compared to uh, a set criteria or the competition. Then I also need to uh, make a relative evaluation. How important is it? Perhaps a big gap is not that important in relation to outcome. If I put a lot of time in that area, Perhaps I don't get as high return of investment as I get in another area. So the relative importance is also important to, to discuss. Uh, I intended the, the judging education that the Society of Photographers had, and I thought it was excellent. And uh, the 10 points that, that the society judges use are these 10 points. Impact, creativity and style, composition, image or print presentation, center of interest, lightning, lighting, color balance, technical excellence, photographic technique, storytelling, and subject matter. And if we would use those areas to do a need and gap profile, it might look like this. So we have a scale from 0 to 100 points, and I could evaluate me, or, or perhaps a mentor of me, or a friend of mine could help me and, and evaluate me. And we can do it for one picture, but we can do it for many pictures. Pictures on my website, pictures uh, that I sell, uh, prints that I enter competition. And in that way, we get a center value, which we can measure with a median or, or mean value. But we can also see the range uh, between the lowest and the highest values. And what we usually see in better players, that better athletes, they have a higher or better center values, and they seldom has a large variety. Worse, worse uh, photographers, I would guess that they have a larger spread between their best and the worst photographs, and the center value would obviously be lower as well. Uh, this would be one way of also comparing to a set criteria, which I could set together with a, a coach of mine, or a friend of mine, or, or alone that I could compare, compare with myself. Or I could do an analysis of what's needed, for example, if I compete on my local photography club or at professional tournaments uh, like uh, at societies next week or, or 
uh, other competitions where we know about what scores that are needed to, to be in top 10 or, or uh, roughly what's needed to win. So that would be one way of, of seeing what's needed to do. Then, of course, we have many supporting skills and assets that, that we could evaluate, like social and communication skills. What's needed for me? Uh, if I'm a poor communicator or poor social skills, I, 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 I probably have a hard time shooting weddings. What kind of personality do I have? Uh, what kind of experience do I have? Uh, what do I need to improve in my knowledge? Perhaps I read to read the damn manual for my camera. <laughs> what physical skills do I have? Do, can I endure a 15 hour day wedding? Am I strong enough to carry the bags? Uh, am, I, am I badly side loaded so I get injured? How's my technical skills? Technical skills, it could be how I hold in my camera, say my camera bag. It could be a general movement uh, so I can move in an injury free way. What kind of equipment do I have? Should I improve on that? Economy, of course, that's a big thing also to, 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 to be uh, able to, to buy support and, and equipment. So support and skills and assets would be an important thing also to consider. Uh, when doing the plans, uh, we usually talk about four different quadrants of planning. You can see top left, we have the important stuff that's urgent. It's like I, I, have, a, I have a pain in my tooth. It's really urgent because it hurts. And it's important because my, my tooth is broken, I can't eat. So I really need to plan those things and, and go to the dentist. Uh, then we have uh, the quadrant two, important but not that urgent. That might be, for example, brush my teeth. It's not that urgent. I could skip that. But in the long run, it's important. Otherwise, I end up in quadrant one, where it's really important and urgent because I have pain in my tooth. In quadrant three, we have not important things but urgent. It might be calls from others that, that's not critical to me. It might be too much time on social media or other stuff. And then we have stuff like, like uh, not important and not urgent. And we should really try, try to decrease those things. So what we have seen is that successful companies put much more time into quadrant two they brush their teeth, so to, so to say. They do the not urgent things that are important. In that way, they don't have as many, many what you call it when you put out the fire, uh, they don't have an, as many critical deadlines, stressful things, and they can work long term. So this would be an important thing in, in step two in the loop when you, when you make the plans toward uh, your goals. To look for the big critical things that are important but perhaps not urgent. Regarding goal settings, um, we have three general goal setting pro uh, goals here. The first one would be process goals and that is perhaps how many hours per week that you want to practice photography, uh, that you're going to learn the new flash or you're going to learn a new technique. Uh, then we have performance based uh, uh, goals. That could be, for example, uh, scoring an 80 in, in tournament, getting a, a, 10 weddings booked or 20 weddings booked. And then we have the outcome goals. And the outcome goals, they are dependent on others. That would be to, for example, uh, 
come top 10 or win a tournament. And for some athletes or for some persons, outcome goals are really, uh, how to say, uh, get them going. It, it fires them up. So those are important in training situations to go up earlier and do the extra mile because it gets them interested. For others, that creates a very unhealthy stress and it becomes a source of anxiety. So usually uh, the outcome goal is not set for everyone, only those with personalities that, that, uh, that it helps for. Also, uh, most athletes don't think about outcome goals during the actual competition. And in photography, that would be, I'm trying to win at uh, WPPI uh, here, so I need to do that shot or this shot. That would be to focus in the future. Uh, so most athletes of photography, they are here and now in the process. However, the, the, the process goals and performance goals could be uh, done by, by everyone. Uh, when you do the plan, we have three different areas of planning. Uh, so we have the structure, and that would be the volume or how much I would train, the intensity of training or how hard I train, and frequency, how often I train. And usually, tournaments or competitions are the most intensive uh, thing that you can do. Uh, for me at least, uh, to have an, a real shoot, a wedding shoot, would be the highest intensity. But uh, photographing a doll in a studio with, in my own free time would be a very low intensi uh, intensity activity mentally for me. Then we have different types of activities. It could be paid assignments, actually actually paid assignments like wedding, sh wedding. It could be a practice shoot with models or just uh, uh, photographing dolls. Or it can be complementary training or preparation like reading a book um, or looking at videos from, from uh, tournaments, how the judges are evaluating uh, the prints. And then we have also the periods. So we have uh, long periods over a year or many years. An Olympic cycle would be a four-year period that we're planning for. A medium training period, that would be a week up to a month. And a short uh, training or a micro-training uh, planning, that would be a training session. Uh, how much you would do, sets, repetitions etc. So that is actually the structure of, of training. When looking at the psychological hallmarks of optimal performance, uh, we can see that, so this is actually aimed uh, toward golfers, we can see that uh, deep concentration, connection to task, performing automatically, uh, Focusing on one shot at a time, distraction control, imagine, imagery, have a focus plan or a plan over the day, focus and refocus plan, being self-confident, feeling uh, fun and enjoyment, feeling in control, uh, having a good attitude, confidence, uh, and being motivated are critical things for the S execution. And I think that uh, these uh, qualities are uh, probably needed or well used in photography as well. Uh, if you compare this to golf, for example, you have the before execution, you have a state of mind that you're needed to do, and some are need to wind up more, some need to calm down more, and it, it's probably like that for us photographers as well. We have different personalities and we need to prepare differently. 
But it's good for us to have a mental readiness plan. We know how to react and prepare for these clients and, and the situation. We collect inf information, we calculate the odds. If I'm trying to uh, anticipate a, mo move, uh, mo a moment in journalistic uh, photography, uh, I need to think about how the, the odds and chances are that I get that that uh, picture. And I need to change if, if, if the time goes uh, uh, too long, then I have to change and, and take another action. I need to visualize the results and I have to make a strong decision to do that instead of being undecisive. During the execution, well, I need to abort if needed. If it's a bad thing, for example, that uh, it doesn't happen. I'm trying to anticipate that that little boy behind the, at the altar, he's going to, to um, uh, look funny or, or make a, what do you call it? Yes, in Swedish, when you sight. But he doesn't do that. I need to refocus about that and, and find another angle. I have my routines with food, um, memory cards, everything that makes me uh, secure during, during the weddings. And I know my equipment. I have, I have this ingrained. I know how to shoot and, and handle different situations because I practice it. It's automatically during, it, it, uh, during the actual competition or uh, the shoot. And I trust my ability to, to get the shot. And after the execution, I need feedback. I, obviously, I don't need feedback at every shot. I need feedback perhaps after the shoot when I get back at that time. I need to adjust when needed. I also need to differ between mistakes and a flaw. Mistakes is like, you know, shit happens. And I have to be um, nice to myself, not, not, not bang on myself to, to, to make me feel bad. But if I have a flaw, a flaw is something that repeats itself, I have a chink in my armor, then I need to consider that and take that into my deliberate practice. I need to be able to dissociate when needed. That means that uh, if I get bad breaks or something happen, I need to be able uh, to act without emotions or, or not being upset. I need to be patient and also enjoy success. So when I have clients that, that um, uh, say nice things or if it goes well in the competition, I need to enjoy it when I reach my goals. And that is one of the things that we sometimes forget to do. Um, so when I have my goals, for example, visible on the fridge, I shouldn't take them down when I reach them. I should also celebrate. Uh, when I'm actually uh, reaching them. So I think it's time for questions there. What do you say, Jay? Uh, yeah, well, we've got a few, so yeah. <laughs> so, so good timing on that. Um, John, there was a few that um, came in quite early on because we, we talked a lot, of, well, you talked a lot about uh, the references, but obviously with your sport background. Uh, and yeah. how you're sort of employing it into into the photography world. But this is the very yeah. first uh, sort of question we had. I'm going to try and read it properly, and please ask me to repeat yeah. it again because it's a bit longer than than some of them. So, um, so I'm going to read it to you straight, and just ask me if you want me to say it again. Yeah. So, top F, top athletes have trainers, and this makes a difference to their performance. Their roles are not just feedback. What's the role of the trainer in the photographic improvement? Um, athletic success is black and white, one wins or one doesn't. Photography carries an element of subjectiveness. So how do you deal with that? Uh, okay, so subjectiveness is one question there. And, and the other one was um, coach, the coach, the role of coaching. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, so so yeah. you know, the, the, uh, they make a difference by from the, from their performance and their feedback. So, I yeah. guess it's how are we drawing parallel parallels from the, the sport world to the photographic world? Yeah. So uh, about subjectiveness, we have uh, many sports that are subjective. It's it's a challenge. 
I mean, in, in, in 100 meters, you measure it in, in seconds. It's not subjective. But when you, go, when you look at uh, uh, bodybuilding, for example, you look at ice skating uh, and stuff like that, you have a, 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 a subjective measurement. Uh, so we have a set of rules, um, depending on the competition. But, but the challenge is also that these subjective things can change over time. For example, um, Boklöv in, in uh, when they jump with skis, he had the V style with the skis in a V, and that was considered very ugly. But it had a great aerodynamic uh, capability because he, he, he got a wider area that lifted him in the air. So he jumped longer than the others, but he got uh, lower uh, style scores. But over time, uh, they changed that, and now everyone jumps like that. So um, it's a challenge, but I mean, we have the rules and the ten, ten rules that, that uh, the society have set up, and we have very skilled judges and, and, and uh, practitioners that need to discuss these things over and over again. Uh, regarding coaching, uh, I'm not so familiar with, with coaching in photography. Uh, as I am in sports, but I do think that is to to improve it. It's it's very important to have mentors and and someone who can support and help you. Uh, if you're looking at my own photography, I can see that I have a much harder time in 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 looking at what I think are are my best or or worst images because I'm so em emotionally attached to them. Uh, when I'm looking at other photographs, others, then it's much easier for me because I'm, I'm, I'm not as attached to it as, as, uh, as I am with my own. Yeah. Uh, I think actually uh, the, the second question that I have for you kind of, hmm? I think, helps illustrate what we've just been trying to talk about. And what's been interesting for, for me, John, obviously, for being, I've been in, you know, in the photography world now for almost 20 years so you know and, and doing the academy for 10 years is that um I, I really did you know not that i don't always pay attention but tonight i really wanted to you know listen to every word that you said because i wanted to be able to ask you questions myself and i have a few so that which i think is really yeah, good sure. um so this is what came in as my second question i think relates actually close to what we've just been talking about coaching and and i'll, I'll, I'll put my my take on it as well um it, after you've if you've looked at it but it, they were referencing to the loop so great that you've jumped back to this presuming presumably this is the question sorry presumably a coach in photography is also needed to formulate programs from a position of knowledge so I think that's quite interesting and sort of almost backs up what you just kind of said really I think from the first question it's that obviously we're looking you know we were looking very much at the sport industry your history your background in that anyway um, for me you know uh, and I think you just mentioned it you know when I uh, look at uh, really interesting how you were talking about pushing yourselves I mean it's something that we we've done quite we, we, we do preach a lot here at the academy you know you, you have to practice yeah. you have to learn all of the time and, yeah. and I'm very lucky to be around Mark who's a he, he, if you're not learning he, he's going to kick your backside, you know, he's going to go, come on, you know, Jay, don't get stale, yeah. now learn, you know, I think it's important. Yeah, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Oh, without a doubt, and it's so easy to get into your comfort zone, and yeah, I think yeah. um, what's really interesting, and the couple of questions that so we need to finish off with, John, because obviously we've talked yeah. about, obviously, the, the key elements that you've said are practicing, but obviously practicing correctly and not overdoing it and making sure, you know, you pace it. This is what I'm taking from your presentation. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, because I, I think it's quite easy for me. I can quite easily run headlong into things when I'm learning and do it too fast and not take it in properly. I'm very, very good at that, as Mark will tell you, I'm sure. Um, so pacing, I think, is key. How how much time, you know, you've been a, a photographer now for, for a long time, as well as obviously with your sports background. How much time would you say then, if we're going to evaluate it, how much time a month would you put into your own personal development, do you think? It, it, it's, 
for me it's very uh, time dependent on, on depending on what month it is. So uh, for me now it's easier for me when it's a low season in, in the wedding industry. It's, it's easier for me to uh, look at new equipment. Um, I'm actually a while ago I, I bought a larger doll to practice on, not not to wear out my my family. <laughs> so uh, I would say every week uh, I'm not practicing as much as an athlete athlete are doing. I'm not pushing it uh, uh, to that extent. So I um, so I wouldn't consider myself doing that high volume uh, of, of practicing. But I need to do it. Some some of it is pushing myself out of my comfort zone at least one time per week trying something. Brilliant, yeah, I, I get that fully. So um, again, I suppose backing up what you said then, you know, when you said things are time sensitive for you, as they will be for all of us. So you know, yeah, there, there, yeah. There's some of us, are, if we're full time mm. photographers or in full time work, some of us are part time yeah. photographers or hobbyists and enthusiasts. So we have full time jobs as well. But it is making that time. It's that planning that you talked about, isn't it? It's that planning. Yeah. And, and making yeah. sure that if you're going to, to set some time, yeah. it's important to do it, isn't it? You've, um, yeah. you, if you we, think it's important but not urgent, uh, if, it's, it's, if it's a critical, a key thing for you, make it a priority. And, you know, and the best thing for me as a non, when you meet me, John, you'll realize that I am the most non-sport person in <laughs> the world. <laughs> and those of you that do know me will know that, um, you know, but uh, uh, I can, you, it's like anything though, isn't it? You train to get better. Um, mm. And I, you, you have brought this quite, you know, it's the, as, I, as I mentioned to you yesterday when we were chatting online, um, you've brought this, it's great that these two worlds have kind of crossed just from the mm. things that you love and that you do. Um, mm. And it's, you know, they might, I think what I've seen tonight uh, listening mm. to you is that, again, so much of it comes down to almost common sense, but it's just drawing mm. parallels from other things. And you mm. can just go, oh, hang on a minute, how would a photographer mm. do it? But sometimes you want to step back and go, well, you know, how did that sprinter reach the 10 second mile, you know, 10 second, whatever yeah, it is, yeah. um, 100 meter sprint. Um, yeah. You know, I, ultimately I want to get better. So how do I, what do I do yeah. is practice is train. Um, I yeah. think mentoring is key, isn't it, John? I mean, I, I know, I'm lucky enough to have been around Mark mm. and obviously the guys that teach on the photography mm. academy. So whenever I've wanted to learn something, I've been in the luxury and the, the, to be able to yeah. go, how do I do this? Please show me, I want mm. to learn. You know, but I think the resources are there. Obviously, you know, it's easy for me to sell the Photography yeah. Academy. We've got all of this resource available to you. But it is important to look, study, learn, and and reflect from it, isn't it? And just go, well, you know what? I want to know how to do that. How do I do that? Mm. And if, yeah. if I don't know, find out how I did it. I think, yeah, I think that's key. Uh, John, before we go, uh, I wanted to share this with you. Um, this has come through from uh, another John who's been on live with us. He said, John, fascinating. Okay. I feel like I've been on an expensive performance seminar. So so that was just sort of summed up some of the feedback we're getting already. Okay. So really, really, and from me to you, yep. thank you fully. One person that understood my Swinglish. No, no, I understood loads of it, honestly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been That's chatting good. for two days, and if I can understand you, <laughs> then any, anybody oh. can. Um, yeah, awesome. So, yeah. Excellent. Uh, John, before we go, we must talk about you obviously yeah. being in, in London next week. Uh, but yes, before we yes. b before we do that, I do want to just thank you for the recording of the of the presentation. So really appreciate you giving up your time tonight. I know you're an hour ahead of us as well uh, in in Sweden. There. So you know, from everybody, I on my yep. now, and obviously from here us at the Photography Academy and of course the societies. Thank you for doing that. So let me just. Uh...